Right. So are there any other objections to the covenant of works that, that you've worked through over the years, either in your writing or in your pastoral ministry that, that might be helpful to discuss? I think the, the some of the big ones are that uh, issue of, you know, if there's works, then it's not love. The, the, there's kind of the spirit of the age of, you know, if it's legal, then it's not authentic. And, and we've talked about that one. Uh, I think the other one that might be worth noting is just how sometimes people have an uh, objection to the fact that Adam could have earned uh, a reward and that this required this covenant required perfect obedience. But I think when we look at the parallel structure to you know Christ as the guarantor in the new covenant, that kind of goes away because we ought to want to talk uh, fully and quickly about the merits of Christ and everything that he has obtained for us by his obedience. Uh, you, know, you wrote a great book uh, on Christ and it, you know his life and why his obedient life uh, was was necessary and why it's a necessary part of the gospel. And, you know, th there's a, a, a parallel category in creation. You know, Christ wasn't obeying for us just for the heck of it. He was obeying on, you know, in our nature, in, on our behalf, because by nature we owed the, God obedience. You know, not, not just, uh, it's not that we owed God simply avoiding to sin. We were supposed to fulfill the law. Uh, and Christ has done that for us. And when we when we're we're thinking consistently, and when we're seeing uh, the 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 line of biblical evidence about the law and its requirements of obedience in relation to reward, we see that that demand was with us since creation too. I think that's the last one, the big one, that's worth tackling.